Okay, what's up guys? Missing Person here, and today I'm going to show you how to get started with uh, Sailor Moon S Online. Some people want to play this game, but there's no scene around you, you don't have a cart, so what do you do? There's actually a few people that still play this across the world, so why not, why not get started in uh, the online world? So the tool we use to do that is the Dolphin Emulator. Yes, I'm not making this up. It's a GameCube and the emulator, and it works for Super Nintendo. So it's one of the uh, best tools for that because, you know, the Smash community has worked on the net code to the point that it's almost like playing offline. I mean, it's not. There's still going to be some kind of latency just on the inherent nature of playing through the internet, but it's better than nothing, and it, honestly, it's approved by other communities, including the CBS2 community, so it comes highly recommended. So what you do is go ahead and install Dolphin. I've already got that installed, so I want to make a note that you want to get 5.0-321 and the... Uh, Link to that will actually be in the description of the video, so go down there, give it a click. The reason you want to do this and not some other version is this version is actually more optimized for online, and if you mismatch your versions, you just simply will not connect. Okay, then you also want to go ahead and get the WAD file, which is basically a modified Sailor Moon ROM that works through Dolphin. And the uh, Discord community for TMNT and Sailor Moon S is being kind enough to supply that. So the link will also be down there. So once you get both of those downloaded, you'll want to extract Dolphin. And that will come into the form of a Dolphin X64 folder. Open that. There'll be a ROM folder. Open that. And then you want to copy the uh, WAD file into the ROM folder. And open up the emulator, which I've done. And you go to options and configure. You want to go to the path tab and add that ROM folder into your directories. And I've done that. Go ahead and click OK and hit refresh. And it will and then say when S will show up in your files. So to get started, and then also make sure you configure your controllers. I'm just going to use the standard controller and hit configure. Do all of this. And once that's done, hit OK. Now, to get started on your netplay, you're going to want to hit Tools. And then Start Netplay. And there's an option for direct connection, which will use your opponent's IP address to connect to them. I prefer not to do that. Don't want to. In these times, you don't really want to give out your IP address that much. You don't want to run the risk of getting hacked. So another option is transversal server, which is basically you give a code to your opponent and it bypasses the whole IP thing altogether, and they won't know it unless they're really crazy and have like packet sniffers and whatnot. But anyway, so. So once you do that, you'll hit, if you're the connecting person, you'll get the code from your opponent, paste it in as the host code, and then click connect. This one will not work. Let's say you're the host, make sure you click on the game that you're going to play and click host. Then, then right here, under players, you'll have a code, go ahead and click copy. Paste that to your opponent, they'll join, then you can hit start. And as expected, the game will launch. I have no one in the room, so nothing else is going to happen. So, so you need the class controller. That's fine. But then what happens? You get to the remote S, just like it was on uh, Super Nintendo. Only you're playing online. Once you're finished with the matches, you can go ahead and click the X. It'll ask, do you want to stop the current emulation? Hit yes. And that's it. Pretty simple. If you have any questions, uh, leave them in the comments. Um, otherwise, enjoy.